The execution of that will hopefully be a lot cuter than the filming feel. There's a camera in my bathroom cabinet and I'm pretending that it's not there. It's a very weird start to the day. I felt like this was going to be such a cute intro. And actually I feel like it's probably going to haunt your nightmares for the rest of time. Hello. It can actually do with you being slightly higher, but I have absolutely no idea where I put my tripod. I've got a feeling Adam might have it in his backpack from the flight. And I think you might have taken it to work. So today is going to be a day of just generally balancing the camera and hoping for the best, which pretty much sums up my entire time on YouTube, actually. Anyway, good morning, friends. How's it going? Nice to see you. To see you nice. It is the day after the day after that we're back from New York. Um, and when I tell you, those post-holiday blues... <laughs> have me sagging. No, I'm kidding. Although not really kidding at all. I've definitely got the post-holiday blues. I woke up, I was like, why am I not in New York right now? This is, this seems like a terrible decision. In fact, maybe I'll move you out of the bathroom cabinet right now, just so the lighting is not quite so insane. Let's put you, oh, that's better. Why didn't I just put you there in the first place? <laughs> I mean, it's sl a slightly looming angle. So I basically just wanted to kick things off today with a little bit of a freshen up to uh, make myself feel slightly more human. Putting as much moisture into my face <laughs> as I possibly can and hoping that it'll bring me back to life slightly. Wow, that already feels so much better. I honestly think if I'd just used a cold flannel there and absolutely nothing else, <laughs> it would have felt like it had worked wonders. I'm just gonna keep dabbing my face like this. Feels really nice. <laughs> feeling a lot brighter now. Ready to, ready to seize the day. Maybe, maybe not that far, but we're gonna, we're gonna experience the day. And we're going to be glad about it. Actually, my moisturisers and stuff are literally all upstairs at the moment. So let's scoot on over to my little dressing table. I actually really need a new day moisturiser. I don't really have one at the moment other than this one in my SPF. So I'm probably just going to whack that on today. Oh, and then I might put some of this on because that's nice and hydrating too. I feel like I haven't really got loads to fill you in on this morning because I was vlogging the whole time while we were away. So it feels like I've been talking to you loads recently. It feels like you know everything that's happened recently already but this this actually might go up before the second new york vlog i'm just sitting here with blobs of cream on my face i didn't think i'd filmed very much i um i felt like i was being very sporadic with it i felt like it was going to be very like here's this and now this and this 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 and this but when i went back to my desk yesterday the first thing that i wanted to do was back up all the footage because i hadn't been doing that while we were away i decided not to take my laptop when we've been to florida previously i've taken my laptop with me um, because there's been like brand work involved and stuff um, so I was backing up the footage every day but this one <laughs> I was really risking it for a biscuit and just hoping that I didn't drop my camera into the Hudson at any point basically so I backed up the footage first thing yesterday and um, there's three and a half hours worth of footage so I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to form that <laughs> into a vlog into any kind of cohesive vlogging shape all my makeup is still in my flat lay travel pouch um so i need to move all this back into my desk anyway i'm gonna whack a bit of makeup on to look slightly more presentable and a bit less blotchy <laughs> blotchy she's a blotchy babe mr blotchy mrs blotchy second cousin of mr blobby uh, oh i'm wearing pink as well <laughs> perfect mr blobby style icon i'm gonna go for a little bit of foundation I'm gonna go for some eyebrows. Why not treat yourself? Probably a little bit of powder because after all that, I'm gonna be a bit shiny. And some lashes. We'll do a little bit of a lash. We'll get on the lash. You know what they say? <laughs> There's really nothing like putting a metal device right next to your eyeball to make you feel on top of the world. You know what one of my most thought of movie moments is? I mean, The Princess Diaries. Is a, is a movie masterpiece, we all know that much. But I I reckon every day when I finish my makeup, <laughs> I reckon that genuinely every day of my life for, I don't know, how old's The Princess Diaries now? Probably like 20. Maybe every day of my life for the past two decades, I finish my makeup and I look in the mirror and I think, well, as usual, this is as good as it's gonna get. <laughs> Mia Thermopolis, love you forever. I don't think I'm gonna do anything to this today. It's getting very long actually, isn't it? Do a haircut. Um, I might pin these bits back 
because it stops it looking quite so heavy. Um, or if, this is like the exact hairstyle that I used to do in sick form, so it really makes me realise that absolutely nothing about me has changed since I was 17 years old. <laughs> except the wrinkles. Okay, next on the list, I, I'm gonna head out and about. We're in dire straits this morning, and I mean seriously dire straits in this house because we've got no coffee. And if you know anything about this household, <laughs> that is real bad news. So I think what I might do, I've actually got a meeting that I've got to jump onto, and I've got a little bit of work that I need to get done by a certain time. So I think what I might do is take my laptop out and about, go for a little hot girl walk, pick up a coffee along the way, Take in some fresh air. I was gonna say vitamin D, but I mean, it is so dark out there. I don't think the vitamin D, <laughs> I don't think the vitamin D is in the room right now. I think we'll go and set up camp in a coffee shop for a couple of hours, get my work done. And then, do you know what I'm gonna do today? I had a little brainwave in the shower earlier. I thought, I'm gonna do some baking today. And we're gonna celebrate the start of spring, allegedly. I'm gonna make some hot cross buns. Oh, is that the the Hocus Pocus 2 promotional t-shirt? Yes. Yes, it is. There's only so many aesthetic points I can ever win for this bedside table because at any given moment, it will be covered in 19 drinks of water and 14 books. There was one thing that it was worth coming home for. If there was one thing that we did miss while we were away, well, obviously the cat, but I'm talking about our bed of absolute dreams. We have crafted. <laughs> the bed of perfection. You might remember last year now, it was ages ago now, we swapped out our old bed for an Emma mattress and an Emma bed. Emma very kindly sponsored this video, so thank you so much guys. And I tell my friends all the time, anyone who will listen for long enough, I basically tell them how Emma has been such a game changer for my sleep. I am naturally not a good sleeper. I can get to sleep quite easily to begin with, but then I will wake up in the night, start worrying, fretting, stressing about things, and be awake until the small hours of the morning and that has not been happening since we changed this bed. That has been a main personality trait of mine for as long as I can remember and I have been sleeping so much better. Because we'd loved the bed and the mattress so much we also recently decided to change out our pillows. So we now have the Emma premium microfiber pillows which I think are genius because they've got adjustable layers inside of them. They've basically got multiple pillows inside one enveloped pillowcase so you can basically customize and adjust that to become your perfect level of squishiness. And then we also as well decided to go for the Emma original pillows which are quite a lot firmer and they give you the proper support that you need for a really restful sleep. And I also just want to make sure I give a little shout out as well to this duvet. This duvet I can't, this is the thing I think, obviously the mattress is super comfortable, but the duvet is the thing that makes me feel like we're sleeping in a hotel bed every night. We've got the Emma Four Season Duvet, and it's like being wrapped in a cloud. The toasty cinnamon bun levels. You have your spring summer layer and your autumn layer popping together and they're temperature regulating. So you just stay lovely and warm and cozy with both of them. But then when it starts to get a little bit warmer, you can just unpopper them, use either your autumn one or your spring summer one. They have like different togs of thickness for the time of the year. So you just have your perfect duvet all year round. I think it is such a great idea. And the four season duvet, my absolute fave, the pillows, the mattress topper that we've got at the moment, the mattress and the beds are all all in the current Emma sale. You can get up to 55% off over there. And if you use my code Lucy Jane, you will get discount on top of the sale prices as well. So an extra bonus saving. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description box down below. The Emma sale, which is currently running up to 55% off. And don't forget code Lucy Jane to get an extra discount on top of the sale prices. Some of the savings are wild. Should I put this away now? We'll do that when we come back. <laughs> That's later Lucy's problem. What I am going to do though is put a load of laundry on and make some progress there. I <laughs> show what I recently discovered, which feels like an upgrade as my existence as an adult. Um, the delay button on the washing machine. Now, I know I should have probably discovered that a very long time ago. So you can load the washing up. And if you're going to be out for a few hours and you don't want to leave your wet washing sitting in the washing machine, you can delay it for like three hours and then it'll just start as you're on the way home. Look, modern technology. Maybe if I'm extra lucky, I might even be able to peg it on the line. Let's not go too crazy though. Let's not, let's not pin those hopes and dreams too high. Something very exciting for today though 
It's the debut of my new tote bag. <laughs> Look at this beauty. I bought this from Books on Magic in Brooklyn. I mean, I, could, I was powerless to resist this. I was that very annoying tourist that was like, please can I have the tote bag and the sticker? Thank you so much. Look at that, she's so cute. Um, so I've got my laptop in my lovely new laptop sleeve. Got my laptop charger, although that's probably ambitious. Getting a seat with a plug point is probably very ambitious. My card holder, got my headphones, I've got a pen. Uh, did I did I steal this pen from Ruby Ross's pizza place? Yes, yes I did. And I've got a lip balm, so I just need to grab my keys. Do I need to wear a coat? Hey Google, what's the temperature today? Today in London, expect a high of 15 and a low of 10. 15 degrees, practically tropical. No coat for me, thank you very much. judge i know there'll be a small percentage of you out there who will fully understand this the majority will probably be quite disgusted by this that's okay with me i've come to accept the fact that i am gross <laughs> i'm just about to have a pickle break these are the pickles that we bought back from new york <laughs> from a restaurant called jacob's pickles um to say that they're the best thing that's ever happened to me i mean it might sound a little bit dramatic but honestly it's not false <laughs> wow these are verging on a religious experience honestly and now i will wash my hands because briny hot cross buns are probably not the way we want to go although right this afternoon it's actually half four i said this afternoon <laughs> this early evening um we're gonna have a little baking sesh i thought that would be really nice to do together i thought that'd be lovely and wholesome i would normally do the baking over this side in this little area here but i mean this is the perfect spot look at that it looks like i've got my own cooking show da -da 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 that's under the sea might also go for a a very unattractive hair up because it's it's honestly doing my head in Let's just move the cat food out the way and of course most importantly it's time for the return of probably the most iconic thing i own the tracy beaker bowl i don't know how much i love and treasure this bowl i've taken it out of regular kitchen circulation no one else is allowed to use this <laughs> apart from me when i was going around the shop i took that risk of being like oh we've definitely got that oh we've definitely got that i've definitely got that cue me finding out right now that we definitely don't got that. So here's everything we're looking at. We've got bread flour, we've got mixed spice, nutmeg and cinnamon. We've probably got all of these in the cupboard, gonna be honest. Uh, caster sugar, yeast, butter, milk, sultanas. This is where this is gonna really divide opinion, I think. We've got sultanas and mixed peel. And before I get stuck in here and uh, go off on a rambling tangent about everything but hot cross buns, I should probably actually just explain what these are because whenever I mention them, I feel like UK people are gonna be shook. Whenever I mention hot cross buns, people from America have literally never heard of them. I don't know what the hell they are. And they're like, hot cross what now? I don't think they've made it across the pond. They're very much like a springtime Easter thing. Um, they're like a soft, doughy, cakey, raisin filled, Bun. Eating them on their own, they're nothing particularly special, but if you stick them in the toaster and you slather them in butter, like most things, you're onto a winner. And here is what they should, in theory, look like. Uh, let's remember that <laughs> for when we get to the end of this. I popped over to my Instagram stories and asked for a few questions if anybody had any particularly burning questions to fire over to me. Um, turns out a lot of you are burning real hats. I think the most uh, asked question was how was New York? Did you have a great time? I cannot tell you how much we loved that trip. We just had the best time from start to finish. I feel like it's a good sign on a holiday <laughs> where I, every few hours one of you's like Oh, we could definitely move here though. <laughs> and I will say, I don't think I've ever seen so many dogs in my life. The ratio of human to dog over in Williamsburg is literally like one to one. It's basically nothing but delicious restaurants, lovely bars, great breweries, 
beautiful views, <laughs> gorgeous independent boutique shops. It was so quick to get into the city. If you like kind of doing, you know, like a, a nine till three, where you're like, boom, 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 exciting, exciting. And then you're like, should we, should we go for a beer and maybe uh, play some banana grams? Yeah, yeah, that sounds really good. And then we'll go back out tonight. <laughs> if, that's up, if that sounds like your kind of pace, then you would love the way that we did it. Do you know what really grosses me out? I know it's very important, particularly in the world of lasagna, but nutmeg, they look like tiny brains. I also got asked as well for recommendations, like what we would say was the best things we did, best places we eat, best things we experienced. Um, I think what I'm actually gonna do, I know this is super old school, but I think just so I've got like a point of reference that I can send people to, I think I'm actually gonna do a blog post. <laughs> hello 2010 i will probably also put it in a highlight on my instagram when i get slightly more organized but just cut to kind of like sum it up i would say ruby ross's pizza we had i would say it's the best pizza i've ever had in my life it's one of my favorite meals i've ever eaten in my life we also absolutely loved summit which is one of the kind of viewing experiences that you can go up these super insanely tall buildings and that one was just really fun it's like quite interactive it's a bit instagrammy and it's certainly like an instagram versus reality experience like it was slightly insane in person honestly but we just had such a laugh there we'd been to the brewery for a couple of hours beforehand so we like we had a couple of beers and we were just like a little bit silly and giddy and excited to be there and the views are absolutely incredible okay you can't really see it let me sh actually i won't show you yet because it looks a bit gross <laughs> i'll show you in a second using a fork mix well till you have a rough dough right i'll come back to you when i've got a dough and then i'll be able to talk a bit more we will we will make hot cross buns Hot cross buns. Some people asked as well if there was anything that we missed while we were over there that kind of might mean we need to go back. Um, we've already said that we would absolutely love to go back. It is the most insanely <laughs> enormous place filled with so much amazing stuff to do. Obviously you fill your itinerary like jam packed before you get there and then <laughs> your feet give out on you or the jet lag kicks in and there's certain things you have to like cross off your list. Also the weather doesn't necessarily play ball all the time so there were certainly a few things we missed out on. We spent too long at MoMA so we didn't get a chance to pop to Grand Central. There were so many cool cocktail bars that you guys recommended that <laughs> we just couldn't possibly explore all of them and we really wanted to try like so many more of them that we actually got to and honestly I had so many bookshops on my list that I wanted to visit. If there is one thing that New York absolutely excels at, it is really cool independent bookshops. Travel's funny, isn't it? It's one of those things where like the places you visit <laughs> that you absolutely love, you're like, oh my God, yes, we have to come back here. But there's so many other places in the world <laughs> that you wanna see and explore and cross off your list that getting back round to the ones that you've already done almost seems criminal, like when there's so much other stuff out there to see. So, oh, I'm just I'm just sprinkling sultanas willy-nilly at this point. I actually had a lot of questions. Let me go for this one actually first because I, I think a lot of people want to know what I do. The internet is a very different place to what it was a few years ago now. Um, and I think just as I've got a bit older, I am less comfortable sharing aspects of my life. I'm quite happy to stand here and, you know, talk about fun things and talk about my favorite books that I've been reading and holidays that we've been on and stuff but I don't know I feel like there has to be some boundaries somewhere so I definitely talk a lot less about my work now um but yeah writing is still a very big part of what I do as always this just ticks alongside it <laughs> I have my fingers in many pies so I just keep all of that very very separate now which I think is understandable but what's your dream job if you're not already doing it if you were forced to change career completely what would you do instead I go through such phases with what I do because <laughs> because working for yourself uh it's it's a lonely old game out there so every sort of six months or so I go through a little bit of a life crisis where I'm like what am I doing why haven't I built like this huge career that I'm kind of top of my game of? Why have I kind of, because especially with YouTube as well, I really kind of capped my own success with that at one point. I stopped doing the thing that was really kind of growing my numbers and growing the money that came with it. And um, I really took a huge step back from it basically, which is pretty much the antithesis of what everybody tells you to do when it comes to climbing a career ladder. That kind of real need to, be fueled constantly by ambition and growing all these numbers and becoming as successful as I possibly can that fueled me a lot in my 20s and I really felt like I had something to prove but I don't know whether it was turning 30 I don't know whether it was the pandemic like 
some kind of switch in my brain completely flipped with that and I've I've really lost that drive but I don't mean it in a negative way I think actually I'm just powered by other things now I feel like as long as I'm making enough money that my cozy little life can tick along quite nicely and we can go on adventures every so often and I'm feeling some kind of contentment and creative satisfaction with what I'm doing that feels like enough to me now <laughs> I don't know whether that's the message I'm supposed to be putting out there or whether I'm supposed to be saying push yourself find your dream job um I don't know I just I just feel like I've really kind of shifted gear I think maybe I've had a shift in where I find kind of validation for myself almost I I know for a fact it used to be my my own self-worth it still is to a lot of extent oh here we go therapy session <laughs> my self-worth is is really tied into productivity and success and kind of reaping praise for my own for, for my success i i really thrive off uh making others proud of me <laughs> i think that is uh oldest sister vibe so i don't know whether that's something that kind of comes with age for everybody and whether you kind of let go of that need to keep pushing yourself for more and more and more i i'm but i'm hoping it's just a, a good sign that i'm kind of content in this life that i've <laughs> created for myself but i'm definitely a lot less led by this concept of like dream job and being successful with a capital s having said that the question about if i was forced to change my career entirely is a really interesting one now that i've kind of grown into my interests and i understand myself a lot better than i did when i was 21 choosing careers and stuff i think i was on the right track going down the writing path but the kind of side of writing that i went into at that point isn't something that i have a, a huge interest anymore in like celebrity news entertainment news showbiz news the realistic answer is probably go into something in publishing like start right at the bottom of that ladder which is something i actually thought about during the pandemic when i was going through <laughs> one of my classic career crises which i haven't had for a while um but i really started looking into that and looking at courses to do that and stuff and it would be a case of really kind of starting right at the bottom and i decided that actually i I value my uh, my current life too much to probably make such a sacrifice. Dream wise, I would love to um, open a little coffee shop with Adam. I think <laughs> that would be really cute of us. I think it would suit us really well actually. He could make nice food that we could serve and we could have a nice cute little coffee shop in London somewhere and it would also be a bookshop and also a florist. Do you feel settled in your life? I know that might seem a bit random but I'm wondering at the moment if anyone ever really feels settled in life you know love you lots. Ah oh, love you too. The idea of being settled is a weird one isn't it? Because in some aspects that means that you've created a life for yourself that you're really happy with which is only going to be a positive. The idea of settled seems so permanent and almost kind of too stagnant because nothing in life is permanent you can't rely on any factor of your life staying the way it is at the moment things can change in a drop of a hat i think rather than settled i really like the idea of being content and at peace and and happy i think the idea of happy and wondering what's next can kind of like coexist with each other part of being content and happy if we're talking about kind of a home situation or with a partner part of that is being excited about the future and wondering what's next right just to fill you in because i am supposed to be baking <laughs> rather than just having a therapy session with you uh here's how we're looking these are now going into a warm place with a tea towel over the top of them and hopefully they should rise a little bit I don't know we'll see what happens at this point i think it goes without saying that we had some questions about when we're going to get married and have lots of babies which is fine Quite a boring answer though because i mean no plans anytime soon for either of those things a couple more of adam's close friends have got married now we went to a lot of weddings last year you might remember but kind of 60 70 percent of my close friends are still not engaged and no one has a baby yet so it's just not something that's kind of part of our universe really so it's not something we feel a real kind of pull towards. I feel like if you'd asked me 10 years ago, I would have been a lot more concerned about it all than I am now because I'm just very content with how things are these days. I'm I'm so grateful to feel the level of like content, calm, happy, happiness that I do these days that I, I'm honestly quite reluctant for anything to change. I guess we'll get there one day, but right now, um, we're more likely to get a dog, <laughs> let's say that. Thoughts on Daisy Jones and The Six. Do you know what? This is going to shock you because I was so excited for this show. We've only watched 
maybe four episodes so far. We've still got like the, all the juicy stuff to go. It's such an amazing feeling, isn't it? When you read a book and then it gets translated onto the screen and the characters are like exactly <laughs> what was in your brain. It's, it's slightly alarming, but I suppose that's a credit to the writing. So far, so good, really enjoying it. I love the kind of like, expansion past the tv show that they've created around it like the band itself the music itself i just think it's so interesting as like a media creation uh someone can write some really good dissertations on it how many books would you like to read this year i ambitiously set my goodreads target as 50 um because last year i did like 40 something and I was tempted to go 52 and do one a week, but that feels, that's quite a lot of pressure, I think. I'm really in two minds about like setting yourself reading goals because it's good motivation, but I also think something you really enjoy, you really don't have to quantify <laughs> to make it kind of valid or impressive in any way. Reading's had such a rebirth over the past couple of years, which is amazing, but it has kind of turned into this slightly strange competition of who can read the most books. But hey, capitalism likes to make us feel bad about anything and everything possible, hey. And that includes curling up with a good book. If you follow book people that kind of hit like 150, 200 plus books in a year, don't let that make you feel like an inferior reader that you're not reading fast enough. Like as long as you're enjoying reading and you're picking up books that matter to you and that you're enjoying, that is literally all that matters. This really surprised me, can I just say, because I had kind of forgotten I'd even mentioned this. The most asked question on Instagram this time was, how is your novel going? How is the book writing going? Have you finished writing your book? How's your own piece of writing coming along? What's the genre of your book you're writing? How's the book going? I honestly forgot I told you about that. Uh, but now that rings a bell and I do remember admitting <laughs> that I had an idea for a novel and I was gonna try and get it on paper. Um, it's going really well. I'm fitting it in wherever I can possible. Um, it is my most cherished time at the moment. I feel completely like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing when I sit down and write and that is a really great heartwarming feeling. I am like fiercely private about it still. Adam knows what it's about, he hasn't read any of it. My mum has read the early parts of it and a couple of other people who needed to read it have read it. It's still very much in progress. I wouldn't get excited anytime soon because as I said, like I have to fit it in just when and where I can. I am not in a position where people are paying me to take time off work to write this. So as much as I thought it was gonna be bashed out in a few months and it would be perfect, that is certainly not the case. I'm literally pouring my heart and soul into it and giving it every spare second that I have. So if I get there, you'll be the first to know. It's not an if, it's a when, because it's literally my main goal. And at, at this point, I don't even care if anybody wants it. I just want to get to the end and have written a book. Then at least I still will have made myself proud and done the thing, <laughs> done the thing that I've always wanted to do. And I'll publish a little copy for my mum and I'll have a little copy on my bookshelf <laughs> and that'll do. But I mean, you never know. Maybe there'll be a little Joe March moment at the end of Little Women for me. One attribute in a life partner that you couldn't compromise on. <laughs> it's gonna sound super simple and obvious, but I could not compromise on not feeling loved anymore. Like the relationship that we've built together is such a loving one. And that sh it shows itself in lots of different ways. I don't mean that we're kind of super PDA, super affectionate, like dramatic romantic gestures, like that's not what I mean at all. I mean, that love kind of really shows itself in its most kind of fundamental forms, I think, in the form of being supportive, like no matter what pops up along the way. It's just like a very kind of blanketing feeling of love. It sounds so cheesy, but having like cr built that with somebody now, comparing that to what I've had previously, which was, I mean, looking back on it, it was almost entirely loveless from the other side and thinking about how painful and lonely and isolating that was now, that's something I couldn't compromise on anymore. Which I, I consider that to be growth. <laughs> I think that probably means I've grown as a person. Larger than having met someone who, you know, I've built a really great relationship with, that also comes from having grown up myself and built a better relationship with myself because I was willing to accept <laughs> a lot less than I'm, I would be willing to accept now. All the big questions around here. Did you get busted tickets? 
I mean, come on now. You know I did. Yes, it's the busted 20 year reunion tour, everybody. We are all officially decrepit old crones. Can I get a whoop whoop? But you know what? I'm just about doing things that make me happy these days, honestly. I saw a TikTok the other day that was like, one of the best things about being in your 30s is that you can wholeheartedly love and proudly celebrate all the things you loved when you were 14 years old and now you've got more money <laughs> to partake in it all. I think kind of like shedding yourself of any kind of shame of things that you enjoy is so vitally important. And a huge part of it, which has been so important to me as well, is really learning to embrace making your inner child happy. I know that sounds so kind of like cheesy and, and therapist-y, but that's been so healing to me, dedicating time and pride to revisiting a lot of things that I used to enjoy when I was younger and finding that I still love those things is such like a healing, heartwarming thing to do for yourself. I'm all about celebrating what you used to love when you were younger. There's something so kind of safe and secure about it. Nostalgia is a really powerful thing and as long as you're not entirely living in it but you're just allowing it to kind of blend in nicely while you're still being present and enjoying your present life as well, I think that's a really powerful, great, positive combination. I don't think it could ever be a bad thing to allow more fun into your life, <laughs> honestly. I think that is a real key to uh, to being as happy as you possibly can, probably. I have talked so much that I think I probably need to shut up now. And I actually better go check on my dough balls. Don't mind me, I gotta go and check on my dough balls. So here is the finished result of my hot cross bun baking. I'm actually quite impressed with myself. Look considerably better with the honey glaze on top. It turns out if you stick a shiny sugary glaze on anything, it really works miracles. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Although I would say it was quite a lot of faff considering you can go in and buy a packet of them for a pound. <laughs> hey presto. Homemade hot cross buns. Adam's just arrived home. He's currently embracing the cat though, so I'll give him a minute. <laughs> you want to reveal your surprise today? There he is. Oh yes, my lovely work colleagues got me a uh, yeah. big hamper. Look at that, from, from Lena Stores. Everyone's fave Lena Stores. If you are ever in London and you're looking, oh the cat's going to get involved too. <laughs> in the bag, are you part of the hamper? <laughs> if... <laughs> So I went, to the, went for one beer after work and I saw these in the bag and I was like, oh, these would be a good little... Have you cracked into them? No, I didn't. Oh. I was like, I was like, well, everything else in here would be a bit weird to eat at a pub, but these are like... I was picturing you on the bus home, just like... Yum, 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 <laughs> these rose... crackers. Oh, hello. <laughs> this is like in, in like a Star Wars TV show and film where they do that side swipe chain. <laughs> these lovely little flatbreads with rosemary. Very nice. Very good, so I thought that would be nice to snack around the pub, but I didn't. I was, that was good. Posh pecorino cheese. You know cheese is posh when it comes wrapped in its own paper. Oh, that was from my Tesco shop. Oh. <laughs> Not that, I thought it was some posh garlic. <laughs> I thought they were really covering all bases there. This is... The olives. Posh olives. Oh, oh artichokes. Ooh. Sicilian artichokes we've got there. I've never eaten an artichoke like that. You have to do the tap in the screen. I've only ever eaten a deep fried artichoke. I don't think I've ever eaten a fresh there one. There you go, well. What do you do with them? Just like scoff them, don't you? I'm not sure what these are. This is the mystery item. If anyone Italian's watching, before we Google it, here's your chance. What's inside the mystery jar? Unique Italian condiment prepared with candied fruits submerged in mustard syrup. What the heck? So yeah, I don't really know what... So we're on the wiser. Maybe someone can tell us what are these and how do we eat Candied them? fruit and mustard flavoured syrup. Excellent accompaniment to boiled meats and mild cheeses. Oh, it's like a charcuterie vibe. Pomodori semisecchi. Mmm. Oh, it's was like a... Uh... Oh, they look banging like sun dried tomatoes. Delicious little tomatoes there. Oh, they look so good. They're good. Yeah. And the pièce de résistance. Oh, is it? <laughs> Couple big saucies. <laughs> the way to your heart. Charcuterie board. Wow. Well, yeah, banging. That's a nice treat. What a treat on a Thursday. Yeah. So thanks again. Thanks again, colleagues. Oh, if anyone's watching, thanks very much. That's worked out very well for me too. All right. Well, now we're going to eat some pork noodles for dinner and hunker on down for the evening. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, keeping me company today. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you enjoyed the bonus hamper haul at the end. That was an unexpected plot twist. You never know what's gonna oh, happen oh. next. Is that my first haul? Um, it might be. And on that note, we'll see you very soon with another video. Bye bye now. Bye 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 bye.